Now that we know how to get the empirical formula of substances, it's time that we go beyond the empirical formula. The next step is we have to know how to get the molecular formula of substances. Remember that empirical formula just gives us the whole number, the simplest whole number ratio of the subscripts of each component of the substance. However, when we talk about molecular formula, molecular formula gives you the actual number of the atoms of that particular element that constitute your compound. So how do we get molecular formula from empirical formula? First is you have to pass through empirical formula first. So again, if to recall to get empirical formula, when you're given the percent composition, we just make it as a gram and then we divide it by the molar mass to get the mole. And then we choose the smaller number or smallest value. We divide all the moles by that smaller value until we get a whole number ratio. The whole number ratio becomes the subscript for each element that will constitute your empirical formula. Now, we can use the empirical formula to get the molecular formula. What we need to do is we just need to find the factor. How do we get the factor? By getting two masses. First is we need to get the empirical mass and then we get the molecular mass which is given in the problem. So molecular mass divided by empirical mass should give us the whole number factor that we need to multiply to the empirical formula to get the actual number of atoms in the molecule or in the compound. To illustrate that, let's go to a sample problem about a compound that constitutes 71.65% chlorine, 24.27% carbon, and 4.07% of hydrogen. Now, you notice that aside from this percentage um, for each element given, you're also given the molar mass of the compound, which is also termed as molecular mass, and it's 98.96 grams. It's important that the molecular mass has to be given before you can proceed to the computation. And of course, we need to, do, to get the molecular formula from this molecular mass. So we can't get molecular formula without passing by the calculation of empirical formula. So let's do empirical formula first. So to recall, we need to have, wait, we need to have the 71.65% Make it into grams, so 71.65 grams of chlorine. And then we have 24.27 grams of carbon. And then we have 4.07 grams of hydrogen. So what do we do with this again? We divide this by its molar mass in the periodic table. So chlorine is 35.45 grams. Because it's molar mass, it's always the mass of one mole. For carbon, it's one mole divided by 12.01 grams. And then for hydrogen, for every one mole of hydrogen, you have 1.01 grams. So when we divide this, we know that the answers will be in the calculator. For chlorine, it's going to be, it's going to be 2.02 moles. And then for carbon, this is still 2.02 moles. So let me put carbon and then chlorine. And then for hydrogen, that is 4.03 moles of hydrogen. The next step, let me, let me cancel for first the unit. So grams will cancel out, grams cancel out. So these are our mole answers the next step is we need to get the smallest value divide all those mole all these mole answers by the smallest value of course it's obvious that the smallest value is 2.02 and so we divide them so 2.02 divided by 2.02 and then 2.02 also divided by 2.02 and then you have 4.03 divided by 
2.02. And so after dividing that, we get the quotient, we get the ratio. Of course, the first one for chlorine, it's 2.02 divided by the 2.02, so you get 1. So there's 1 for chlorine. And then the next one for carbon, it's also 2.02 divided by 2.02, we get 1 carbon. And then lastly, for 4.03, we divide it by the smaller 2.02 value, we get around 1.99, which is round up to 2. So you have 2 hydrogen. So now we have the ratio. And to check out the ratio, we have whole numbers already. So we don't need a multiplier to make them a whole number because there's already whole number. So we can say that the empirical formula for this compound, so the compound has an empirical formula of Cl1, C1, and H2. Rearranging this, you usually the most electronegative element is written last. So we can have C H2 Cl. Hydrocarbons are usually beside each other and the, the non-metal, the other non-metal, the halogen will be last. So our empirical formula is CH2 Cl. So where do we go from here? Right after getting the empirical formula, we can get already the mass of your empirical formula. How do we get the mass of your EF? So just look at the periodic table. You have to get the mass of one carbon, two hydrogen, and one chlorine. So you have to multiply each quantity with its mass in the periodic, periodic table. So carbon is 12.01, hydrogen is 1.01, .01, chlorine is 35.45. So the only thing you need to multiply is hydrogen here because that's times two. So that's going to be... 2.02 adding everything adding everything you'll get the empirical mass of 49.48 grams so 49.48 grams is what we call the empirical mass so what do we do next after we get the empirical mass we use this empirical mass to be divided by your given molar mass. Remember that the molar mass is given to be 98.96 grams. So that given mass is always greater than the empirical mass. Obviously, 98 is greater than your 49.48. So what we do is we use your empirical mass 49.48 grams to be divided by your 98.96 grams given. So divided by divided by 49. Okay, so we divide your 98.96 by your by your empirical mass of 49. 48 grams so the grams will cancel out dividing that you will get a 2 so what is the purpose of the 2 the 2 is your factor your mul multiplying factor this is your multiplying factor that's what you need to multiply to your empirical formula subscripts to this so multiplying all the subscripts of your empirical formula by 2, you will get the molecular formula of C, 1 times 2 is 2, H2, so 2 times 2 is H4, and then chlorine is 1, 1 times 2 is 2, so Cl2. So you see that to get the molecular formula, you need to get this multiplying factor which comes from the ratio of the, the given molecular mass divided by the empirical mass okay so that's how we get molecular formula always remember you need to get empirical formula first to get what we call the empirical mass and then that empirical mass will be used to get the multiplying factor and that's it and how to get molecular formula Thank you, everybody.